Alrighty, well, welcome back, boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shane, coming to you live from Sun Academy. In this video, what we're talking about is still we want to that unit five. We're in less than 11 now, and so now we're going to be shifting in this unit to some volume. We're going to be talking about some 3D shapes here. So in the first one it says, which one does not belong? And it's solid. So when you think of a solid, it's talking about a three-dimensional shape. So it says these are drawings of three-dimensional objects, which one does not belong, and explain your reasoning. So what I want you to do is I want you to think, pair, share. So pause the video, work with your partner, try to figure out, pick one of these, and what you can write is, so for a sentence starter, you can say figure blank, you could say A, B, C, or D, does not belong because, and then explain your reasoning. So try that out, work with your partner, Pause for yourself. All right, so on the second point, or second part, I should say, it says height and volume. So what I want you to do first is to follow the link to open up on Schoology and scroll down to activity 11.2. And so I'll do that with you right here. So I'm going to pull up our Schoology page. And so what you're going to do is you're going to click on that Unit 5 folder, scroll the whole way down to where it says... We're on a lesson 11. Again, click on Espanol if you need that one. But we're going to say, okay, click on that one. And it doesn't load right away, but if you click on the blue link or you can click on the little box arrow, either one works. It will pull up a new tab. Make sure it will be on there. And you'll hit continue or it will let you load for a second. And then what you can do is you can click on that 11.2. And so now what we have here is we have a cylinder. And so what I want you to, to do is follow the directions that go along with it. So it says fill the cylinder with different amounts of water and record the data in the table. So for example, again, I can click on, you know, it has uh, volume is zero, the height is zero, but it has diameter of five and that diameter of five is not gonna change. And so what we're gonna do, I was gonna say, okay, if I, click on fill and click on pause in a little bit. Again, notice how I have 0.2 and my volume is 4.1. I can do that again. I can say, hey, if my volume is 8.4, that means my height is 0 0.4. So make sure you can try, it, try these out. So let me say this here. So let me hide this. Now let me say, say pause and record record data and what that means is I could say for example I could say if my volume was 8.2 I could say my height of my water the height of the water was 0.4 so make sure you can try some of these out. Uh, I'll, I'll do one more example. I'll, I'll say if it's a uh, 20.8, then my height is 1.1. And so again, what it looks like is like this. It says, let's see if I can get 1.1. Something like that. Again, notice how it changes a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just kind of playing around with this. So, Try using the fill and pause button on your own and record those values on your paper. All right, so now that you, you've filled some of those in, now that you've filled some of those in, it says create a graph that shows the height of the water in the cylinder as a function of the water volume. And this is also on, this is on Desmos, but it's actually on on lesson the lesson page, and so I can say, all right, if my let me pull this back up. So I have this picture on my screen. What I could do is scroll down a little bit more. Notice how it has the Desmos activity right there for you. So all you have to do is this. Let me make sure it's on the screen. Yeah, okay. 
So what you have is you're going to type in your x-axis is going to be the volume. So for example, that using those two points that I had, I had 8.2, and my volume for that was, or sorry, my volume was 8.2, and my uh, height amount was 0 0.4. And I could say my next one was 20.8, and the height was 1.1. So notice how it should have a pattern. Again, fill in some of these for yourself. So we're going to say one more time. I'm going to say pause. Pause to graph on Desmos and check with me. So take your points that you had. So again, if you're looking at your table, whatever your values are going to be. So like I'm, I'm plugging this in, uh, this line in first, and I'll plug in my second line after that. So make sure you can say, again, this is going to be your volume and this is going to be your height. So plug in each of those and come back here in a second. Again, make sure you can check with me. All right, so now that you've put those in, for the last part, it says, choose a point on the graph and explain its meaning in the context of the situation. So again, this is this part was for turn. OK, so for example, if I chose, let's say, this point right here, if I chose this point right here as an example, it says the point 20.8 comma 1.1 means the volume of the water in the cylinder with a 5 centimeter diameter is 20.8 milliliters when the height of the water was 1.1 centimeters. So just saying, you know, what's going on? What does that singular point mean in terms of our graph? And also, too, as another part to this, it's that uh, you should have your graph should form a straight line. And that just means it is a linear function. Okay. Moving on to the next part. For 11.3, it says, what is the shape? So it says, for number one, it says, the graph shows the height versus the volume of a an unknown, volume function of an unknown container. What shape could this container have? I explain how you know. So looking at this graph, notice how, you know, the slope changes at this point right here. So I, I can say, hey, uh, right here, the slope changes because we're going from you know for every two steps up we move one step to the right we change that to about three steps to the right we go two steps up so notice how that slope changes so what we can say is a shape in the form of two cylinders stacked on top of each other and then it says as the liquid gets to the second cylinder the volume will increase less rapidly that means that that the slope, the height of the water in centimeters, is going to, it's still going to increase, so it's still positive, but it's going to be less steep. And so a picture you can draw is going to be something like this. So bear with me as I do this. I can have, I can have a cylinder. So I'm going to draw, let's try drawing a circle like this. It's a lot easier on paper for some reason. All right, so we have our uh, cylinder. And we're going to say, if this is our big cylinder, something like this. And then if we have a smaller one underneath, we can say, hey, that's going to fill up faster as time goes on. However, as soon as we get to this 
bigger cylinder, so our volume is going up, up, up. As soon as we get to this next one, it's going to slow down. So this, at this point right here, this point right here is going to be where that slope changes. So then for number two, it says the graph shows the height versus volume function of a different unknown care, uh, container. What shape could this container have? And explain how you know and draw a possible container. So, so notice right here, the slope increases, increases, and then right here, I'm going to do a different color. We're going to say this part right here. We're going to say the this slope decreases. So it goes from uh, for every 10 milliliters we have 2 centimeters. It goes fr from that pattern to for every 10 milliliters we have uh, let's say that's about 3. So that would be however, however much of an increase. But then it notice how it decreases as we move to the right. So we're going to have to have 3 parts for this one. So we're going to say that uh, for this shape, we're going to say it's going to be three cylinders stacked where the middle one is the smallest and the top is the largest. Let's try drawing this out. So I'm going to have, it almost looks like a uh, dumbbell if you work with weights. So let's say if this one is a bit larger one. So we're going to say here's our first, here's our first shape, poorly drawn. That's okay. And then we're going to have a smaller one that's in between those two. Try drawing it like that. And then we can have a medium sized one, like so. So, something like that, where they're ideally they're connected. But notice how it's three cylinders stacked on top of each other, where the middle one is the smallest and the top one is the largest. So that means you know it's the volume or the yeah the volume is increasing, and then as soon as it gets to this point, the slope increases even more because the shape changed, and then it decreases at this point because it gets to a bigger container. And then it says for the last part for number three, it says how are the two containers similar? How are they different? So it says both are made up of cylinders being stacked, but the second one has three parts where the first one has two parts. So real simple, you know, be able to kind of tell what are some similarities and what are some differences. All right, so now on the back it says cylinder A, B, and C have the same radius. So that, again, when you say radius, you're talking about that distance from the center of the base to the edge of the container, or edge of the circle, I should say. And it says, put these cylinders in order of the, their volume from least to greatest. So we're saying from least to greatest. Well, if I look at this one, we have to talk about the heights. So we're going to say that the heights, if you look at, so let's say look at heights. So which one is going to be the shortest? So we're going to say that B is going to be the shortest. So we're going to say our order is going to be B. And then out of A and C, C is the next one in line. And then we're going to say A is going to be our largest. So let's say let's say least to greatest. All right, moving on to number two. It says two cylinders A and B, each started with different amounts of water. The graph shows how the height of the water changed as the volume of the water increased in each cylinder. Match the graphs of A and B to cylinders P and Q. Explain your reasoning. So we got a, uh, a couple different graphs. Notice how the slope uh, for these two, I can say the slopes are different. I noticed that they're different because A is going to be steeper 
than B. Also, too, I can say, if I look at these two, even though the heights are different, the radiuses, or I can say the radius, the radius is different. So how is that going to affect the volumes for each of these? Well, we're going to say this. We're going to say that line A goes with cylinder Q since the slope is steeper than line B. So we're saying that this is going to be line A and then this goes with the cylinder Q. The reason why that is is we say this means that the volume of Q feels faster than P since Q has a smaller radius. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Notice how this radius from here to here, this distance right here is going to be longer than the distance that we have here. So this radius is going to be larger. And so I want you to keep this in mind. So use this example for exit ticket. That way it's a little bit easier to do. Alrighty. Again, be sure to pause, rewind, replay as always, so that way you can ask questions for yourself. For number three, it says, which of the following graphs could represent the volume of the water in a cylinder as a function of its height? So you could say, we're going to pick the linear and increasing graph. And so the one that goes along with that is going to be this first one here, because as we look at it, this is a straight line. This is not increasing. So that's not this one. And this one is not linear because it has a curve to it. So it's going to be that first one. As the height of the water of, in a cylinder increases, the volume also increases by the same scale factor. We can say, you know, if this is the height on the x-axis, then our volume would be on the y-axis. Then at the bottom it says for number four, together the areas of the rectangles sum to 30 square centimeters. And just make sure you remember what does it mean to have the area of a rectangle? Well, we can say the area is going to be equal to the length times the width. And make sure you see parentheses means multiply. So when we have area equals length times width, it says to write an equation showing the relationship between x and y. And so what we can do is we can kind of piece this together. I can say, well, what's going to be the area of this one? Well, th this area is going to be equal to 3x. And this area is going to be equal to 2y. But it's saying the sum of those two together. So it says the sum of those two is going to be 30 square centimeters. And so when we write the equation, what we can do is we can write 30, or yeah, 3x plus 2y equals 30. Since we have that in standard form, we can graph that in Desmos. So let's uh, do that right now. So let me pull up our Desmos calculator. Let me switch that over like here. All right. So we're going to graph this in our Desmos calculator. So we have 3x plus 2y. Make sure it's on here. 2y equals 30. So notice how we can... I'm sorry, 30. There we go. All right, so again, if you need to zoom out, zoom in, whatever it needs to be. So you have our graph of our function. And so now we're saying, okay, for the third part, so let me hide this real quick for a second. For this third part, it says fill in the table with the missing values. And so what we're going to do is we're going to type this in. We're going to say... For example, this, this first one, I'm going to type in, so type in x equals 3. And what you get is an order pair. You'll get an order pair x and y in your graph. So let me type it in exactly as it looks. So I'm going to type in x equals 3. And notice how I get an order pair of that solution. So I'm going to say that my... My solution where they intersect is 3 comma 10.5 and so what that means is what I'm going to write here is this I'm going to write so let me place this real quick 
I'm going to write, I'm going to write 10.5 because my y value at that point was 10.5. Do the same thing with this y value. I'm or with this value, I should say. I'm going to type in y equals 5 and see what I get. So let me clear this one out and let me re-show it. So I'm going to say y equals 5. And we're saying, okay, well, it has to find where they intersect. And so I'm going to say, hey, that looks like 6 and 2 thirds, or 6.6 .6 repeating. So that means for our x value, that's 6 and 2 thirds, which is equal to 6.6 .6 repeating. So make sure you can type them in for yourself. Again, make sure you can pause for your turn and find those missing points. All right, and then lastly, once you have gotten that one done, our X ticket is as follows. So make sure you're using that uh, problem number two from the practice problems. <clears throat> it says two cylinders, A and B, each started with different amounts of water. The graph shows how the height of the water changed as the volume of the water increased in each cylinder. Which cylinder has a larger radius? Explain how you know. So again, use, use practice problem number two on the back. That way you can try this out for yourself. Again, make sure you can check with me, ask questions as you need to, and as always, Super slam that subscribe button.